Hey everyone, Linkage here with a new Blender tutorial. Today we'll take a look at creating this Rivian key fob. We'll build the model, add the logo, and create some basic materials. So, let's jump into Blender. Before we dive in, let me quickly show you how to add the gizmo to your scene, as I'll be using it throughout this tutorial. Head over to your viewport options, then under Object Gizmo, select Move and Scale. Now, you'll see the gizmo added to your scene, and you can use the arrows to move and scale different elements of the mesh. In a new scene in Blender, let's start by adding a cube with Shift A. Go to your top view and hit Tab to go into edit mode. Add a loop cut along the Y axis with Ctrl R, then right click to drop the tool. Select these outer vertices and press X to delete them. Make sure you have X-ray mode on by pressing Alt Z so that you can select through the object. Next, go to your Modifiers tab and add a mirror modifier. Make sure the axis is set to X, and then turn Clipping on. Now, we can scale our model down a bit. Go to the front view and scale the cube along the Z axis by hitting S, and then Z. Then, in the top view. Bring the sides in to give it a rectangular shape. Hit 2 to go into edge select mode, and then select these two outer edges. Go to the top view by hitting 7 on the numpad, and bevel these edges with Control B. Then, scroll up on the mouse wheel to add two more segments. In our front view, Let's add a loop cut with Control R, then right click to snap it to the center. Then, add another loop cut on top of that and move it up along Z so that it's closer to the top. Select the top edge while holding Alt to select the loop. Then, in the top view, scale the edge in a bit. You can hold Shift Z to scale only along the X and Y. Bring the edge in a bit by scaling along the x-axis by hitting S, then X. Line these vertices up by double-tapping G to slide vertices along an edge. In the front view, line the vertices up a bit more so that the model is more symmetrical. Let's delete the bottom edge loop by selecting it, pressing X, and then selecting vertices. Now, in your mirror modifier, you can select Z to mirror the model. In the top view, Alt select this edge loop, then hit 3 to go to face selection and press I to inset the face. Bring the face in a bit, then select this middle face and press X to delete it. Hit 1 to go to vertex mode, select these two vertices, and move them to the middle. Select this edge loop, scale it down a bit, and move it along X to align it with the outer edges. Hit 2 to go to edge select mode. Then, select these two edge loops by pressing Alt-Shift. Hit N to bring up your item's menu, and set the mean bevel weight to 1. In your Modifiers tab, add a Subdivision Surface modifier, and set the levels to 3. Now, add a bevel modifier and drag the bevel modifier above the subdivision surface. Set your limit method to weight, change your segments to 3, and set the amount to 0.01. Hit tab to go to object mode, right click, and select shade smooth. Go back into edit mode and select this inner edge loop, then in the front view. Move the edge loop down along Z to give the interface a crowned surface. Push and pull some of these vertices to line everything up. Let's go into edit mode by pressing tab. 
We'll be creating the metal loop of the fob, so select this center edge loop. Press Shift D to duplicate it, and then right click. With the edge loop still selected, press P and choose Selection. Press Tab to go to Object Mode and rename your parts. Select the curve and press Tab to go back into Edit Mode. Add a vertex in the middle with Ctrl R, then select these bottom vertices and move them down along Y. In Object Mode, select the fob and press Tab to go into Edit Mode. Add a loop cut so that it matches the curve we just created. Back in Object Mode, select the curve and press Shift D to duplicate it. We're going to convert this edge into a curve, but we want to have a backup just in case. Hide the backup curve in your collection, then select the curve and apply all the modifiers. Go up to the Objects menu and under Convert, convert the edge into a curve. You can hide the fob in the collection tree so that we can see the curve more clearly. Press Shift A and under Mesh, select Circle. Go into Edit Mode with Tab and scale the circle down by pressing S. Marquee select around these outer five vertices and press X to delete them. Select the remaining vertices at the end and press F to fill them with an edge. Now go into Object Mode and convert the circle to a curve by going to Object, Convert, and then Curve. Let's select our outer curve. Go to your Object Data Properties menu. Under Geometry, navigate to the Bevel tab and select Object. Click the eyedropper and use it to select the circle. Now, we have our circle sweeping along the curve. But there's an issue. The flat surface is meant to be on the outside, not on the inside. To fix this, select our curve. Press Tab to go to Edit Mode. Hit A to select all. Press Ctrl T to twist the curve. And then type 180 to twist it 180 degrees. As you can see, the flattened surface is positioned on the outside. Everything is still live, so we can adjust the size of our circle, and it will update along the curve. Adjust the proportions of the curve a bit to get a shape that you like. Then, let's go ahead and rename some of our objects. Now, we want to create a cutout on the fob so that the metal loop can nest within it. First, let's duplicate both the curve and the circle by pressing Shift D and then right clicking. We'll use these to cut away the fob, so you can rename them in your collection. Hide everything in the scene except for the two circles. With the new circle selected, scale it up a bit by pressing S. As you can see in this side view, we have our original metal loop and then our cutting surface, which is slightly bigger. You can tweak the scale a bit for a tighter tolerance. Let's unhide our fob, and with our cutting mesh selected, go up to Object, down to Convert, and select Mesh. We just converted this curve to a mesh so that we can use it in our Boolean. Select the fob, go to your Modifiers tab, and add a Boolean modifier. Make sure the Boolean is set to Difference, and use the eyedropper to select the cutting surface. You can see we have the cutout on our fob, but there are some shading issues. To fix this, go to your modifiers, down to normals, and add a smooth by angle modifier. Next, we're going to create a small parting line on our metal loop. So let's select the loop, go to object, down to convert, and then select Mesh. With the loop selected, press Tab to go into Edit Mode.
Press Alt-Z to go into X-ray mode and select these two edge loops toward the bottom of the fob. Press S, then Y, and enter 0 to make the edge loops horizontal. Press Ctrl B to create a bevel and scroll down on the mouse wheel so that there are no segments. We'll create a very small bevel to use as our parting line. Press 3 to go into face select mode, and with the bevel selected, press X and choose faces to delete the segment. Press 2 to go to edge select mode, marquee select over these two edge loops, and press E, then S, to scale the extrusion. Now, do this for the other side of the loop. Hover over the bottom portion of the loop and press L to select linked. Press P and choose selection. Hide the bottom portion of the loop with H, select the top portion, and press tab to go into edit mode. Alt select this edge loop and press F to fill it with a face. Do the same thing for the other side. In the Modifiers tab, add a Bevel modifier. Set the segments to 3 and the amount to 0 0.002. Then add a Subdivision modifier and set the levels to 3. We'll do the same thing for the bottom portion. Press Tab to go into Edit Mode. Select this edge loop with Alt and press F to fill it with a face. Do the same thing for the other side. Again, add a Bevel modifier, set the segments to 3, and the amount to 0 0.002. Then, add a Subdivision modifier and set the levels to 3. Now, let's add a logo to our fob. To start, select the fob and apply the mirror modifier. Bring up a new window and switch it over to your shader editor. In your viewport, switch to preview mode. Then, in your material properties tab, Add a new material. Change the color to black and increase the roughness. Next, drag and drop the Rivian logo from your desktop into the shader editor. You can find the logo file in the description below. In the shader editor, press Shift A and add a bump node. Connect the color of the image to the height input of the bump node, and connect the normal output of the bump node to the normal input of the principled BSDF. In your image texture settings, change the color space to non-color, and under Repeat, set it to Clip. With the image texture selected, press Ctrl T to add a texture coordinate node. Now, drag out a new window and switch it to the UV editor. Select the fob and press Tab to enter edit mode, then A to select all. In the UV editor, press A again to select everything. Go to the UV dropdown, and under Unwrap, select Smart UV. Then, scale the mesh in the UV editor using S to align the logo to the center of the fob. You can use G to move the mesh into place. Finally, adjust the strength of the bump map in the shader editor. Next, we'll add a simple metal material to the loop of our fob.
Select the bottom portion of the loop and change the color to something like dark orange. Set the metallic value to 1 and reduce the roughness slightly. In the shader editor, press Shift A to add a bump node. Then add a noise texture node. Connect the factor output of the noise texture to the height input of the bump nodes. And connect the normal output of the bump node to the normal input of the principled BSDF. With the noise texture selected, press Ctrl T to add a texture coordinate node. Set the scale to around 100 and then adjust the detail and roughness values to your liking. You can also reduce the strength of the bump node. In the mapping node, you can further adjust the scale. Select the x-axis, then move your cursor over the y and z values while left-clicking to scale all three axes uniformly. Now, select the top portion of the loop. Set the material to metal we just created, then press the new material button to duplicate it. Rename it to silver and change the color to gray. All right, guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned some new tools. We'll see you in the next one.